Okay, so in this video, we will prove part A of the root test. If you recall, part A states that if the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n in absolute value is larger than 1, then the implication is that the corresponding series diverges. Well, suppose we let the limit of the nth root of a n in absolute value be equal to L. What we're saying is L is strictly bigger than 1. So let's visualize this onto the real line. So here's 0, here's 1, and L is some real number bigger than 1. Now let's construct a small interval around L. Small enough that its left-hand point is still larger than 1. Call the left-hand point, say, R, and the right-hand point, S. The key is that R is still larger than 1. All we have to do now is ask ourselves, what does this statement mean? To say that the limit of a n in absolute value and root of, as n tends to infinity, is equal to L. All this is saying is, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, our expression is getting closer and closer and closer to L. How close? As close as we want. Which means, if we take n to be big enough, we can then have every value of our sequence be fitting in this small interval. So the nth root of a n in absolute value will be contained in our small interval as long as n is big enough. How big, we don't know. So we simply say if n is big enough, then some positive integer value. n here could be 10, it could be 100, it could be a billion, we don't know, but that's not important. If n is big enough, the nth root of a n in absolute value will be close enough to L, and so it should fit in our small interval. Well, let's just rewrite this in terms of an inequality. This implies that our expression is between R and S. For all values of n that are bigger than positive, this positive integer, which we call uppercase n. The inequality of interest to us is this one. Keeping in mind that r is a real number strictly greater than 1. So if r is less than this expression, we can take the nth power on both sides, which will preserve the inequality which means we're going to have r to the n is strictly less than if you take the nth power of an nth root, this will cancel and we'll be left with a n in absolute value. And this is of course for all n lowercase n larger than uppercase n. And now all we can do here is let lowercase n tend to infinity. What will be the implication? As this term is less than a n for n's that are big enough, then it must be true that the limit, as n tends to infinity, of the smaller terms will be at most the limit as n tends to infinity of the larger terms. But what we have here is a very simple limit. As r is strictly bigger than 1, we are taking larger and larger and larger powers of a real number that is larger than 1. This will get bigger and bigger and bigger. It will grow out of bounds. It will simply blow up to positive infinity. But if this limit is at least as big as infinity, it must be equal to infinity itself. But now think about it. If the limit of a n in absolute value is equal to infinity, clearly the limit as n tends to infinity of a n cannot be zero. If a n approached zero in the limit, so would its absolute value. 
it's clearly not the case, and so the limit of an, as n tends to infinity, is not zero. And now we can simply quote the divergence test. We are trying to sum terms, this is just a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so forth, and when n is large, the terms are not shrinking to zero, they are not small enough, therefore they are too big, therefore the series diverges by the divergence test. And we can simply write dt for divergence test. Which complete our proof. So to summarize, if the limit as n tends to infinity of the nth root of a n at absolute value is greater than 1, we were able to prove that the limit of a n as n tends to infinity is not equal to 0. Therefore, we are trying to sum, sum sorry, terms that are too large, and the series therefore converges, diverges, sorry, by the divergence test. And that's it.